Hey everybody, happy Saturday. I hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. Um, I'm in my grungy clothes. I've been helping a friend retile her, retile her entire house. So I am covered in putty or whatever that stuff is called. It's all over me. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to get this done now so it didn't get up there too late because it does take about an hour for my service to download this after I record it and upload it to YouTube. So it takes a little bit. So thank you for being patient with me with recording these video videos and posting them rather than going live. It really bugs me that I'm not going live so I can have that conversation with you guys and you guys can talk back while I'm live and ask questions and all of that. So that's kind of bugging me. But um, after you watch this video, feel free to throw questions down in the comments and I will catch up on all of your comments. Um, been pretty busy the last couple of days getting settled here in Montana and helping our friend do some home improvement projects. So I haven't totally caught up on all of your comments yet, but I will. Um, so today I'm going to talk about dialing in nutrition. So I said yesterday, number one most important step you can take in reaching your health and fitness goals and maintaining your results, staying on track, having a permanent lifestyle change for the rest of your life. It's all about your mindset. Um, so we talked all about that yesterday. Like I said, if you don't have the mindset on track, if you're not at least working on it and improving it, you're not going to be able to hit your goals and, and keep with them. That's why we always go back to our old weight or we even gain more weight in the yo-yo diet. I don't want you to do that anymore. It's torture. It's annoying. It's insane, right? So I want you to be able to have a permanent lifestyle change and something you can maintain for the rest of your life, which is why... I hate diets. So today we're talking about dialing in nutrition. I'm not going to talk about severe calorie restriction. That shit doesn't last. It might give you awesome results at first, but within a couple of days or even a week or so, if you're somebody really strong with uh, controlling your food, inevitably you're going to you know, reverse and binge on some food. You're going to be obsessive about food. And this is all about having a healthy relationship with food, something that took me a lot of years to figure out. And I only recently figured out last year how to have a healthy relationship with food. And that's where this comes down to. So if you're thinking about severe calorie restriction, please don't do that. It does not work. It causes lots of other issues. And eventually, actually, um, it, will, it will plateau your weight loss as well because your body is not really sure when it's going to have the next meal and the next nutrients so it holds on to everything because your body's job is to to find homeostasis within all of the functions and and systems in your body and so if you're not providing it nourishment it's not going to be happy so keep that in mind um, for example a woman an adult woman should never ever ever go below 1200 calories ever if you do that you're severely restricting yourself and you're not providing nourishment for your body to function properly. You know, that's why people that are not eating enough calories, they get, you know, the foggy brain, they get confused, they get dizzy, they feel sick because your body needs that food. Um, so with regards to nutrition, I think that when we first start a program or a meal plan, we kick ass, we kill it, we do really well. And if we're not working on our mindset, you know, that's when we start to binge and, and get off track. But the thing that typically happens with nutrition is we do really well for a while. Um, and then we start to go back to our old habits and it sneaks up on us and we don't even realize that we've gone back to old habits or we're slowly headed that way. So usually struggles with a plateau or not being able to lose that first 10 pounds or not being able to lose those last 10 pounds um, is a hint that you're doing something wrong that you wouldn't you're not really on a plateau you just maybe have some other habits creeping back in maybe you're not tracking like you used to and that's really all you need to do to get back on track with your weight loss so Number one thing you need to do, if you're struggling with that first or last 10 pounds, you're on a plateau, you need to track your food for three days and you need to be super honest about it. I know how tempting it is to like have three or four nuts or three or four peanut M&Ms or something and you don't write it down because you think, well, it was just three or four M peanut M&Ms, I don't need to worry about it, you don't write it down. But really throughout the day you had three or four M&Ms like five times or 10 times and it added up to a lot of extra calories. You didn't really think about that because you just had a few at a time, a couple times throughout the day. So when you track your meals and snacks, you need to track anything that goes in your mouth, whether it's um, you're drinking your calories with 
like sodas or whatever. If you're snacking every time you walk by like the reception desk at work and they have little candies out and you grab one and eat it, throughout the day those things add up really fast. So I need you to track your meals, snacks, drinks, anything you're putting in your mouth for three days. And then go back and assess what's going on with that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a few minutes. So like I said, track your food, snacks, everything for three days. And what you might find or realize is that you're falling back into your old habits. And the funny thing is when I tell somebody to track their food a lot of times, then they're more aware about what they're eating and they're making healthier food choices. And they come back to me and say, well, I ate really well for three days. Well, most likely if you did, it was probably because you knew that you were tracking your food and you were going to be showing that to somebody. So you need to be super honest with the way you've been generally eating over the last couple of weeks since you've been on this plateau and since you've struggled. Stay to those eating habits and see what you're really eating. Uh, number two, not about nutrition, and I'll talk about this in the next couple of days, is assessing your workouts. So, you know, when we start a new fitness program, we are pumped up, ready to go. We kill every workout. We push ourselves. We're sweaty. We're dying. We're sore the next day. And then a couple weeks in, maybe a month in, that luster starts to wear off. That excitement starts to wear off. And we get a little lazy. When they start the countdown, three, two, one, we start resting at three. Um, we start taking more breaks. We don't push ourselves as hard. We're not really sweating as much. Um, so maybe you know, assess that as well. And I'll talk more about that in another day. Something else you need to think about is your sleep. How is your sleep really? Like really be honest with yourself with all of these things I'm going to talk about because it's really easy to lie to ourselves um, and think that we're really not doing so bad when tiny little things creep up and add up and cause problems with your weight loss, okay? So really think about your lack of sleep because if you're not getting enough sleep, your stress is going to go up. Your time for recovery for your body when you sleep overnight is going to be less. You know, that time for your muscles to recover and build muscle and burn fat. A lot of things happen overnight while you're sleeping, and it's really important to get enough sleep. And then the other thing is if you're not getting enough sleep, your performance in your workouts is going to suffer, and your motivation is going to suffer, your willpower is going to suffer. Um, so it's important to keep those things in mind as well. And you know, they, some, there's a study out there that says that we make, like, I, can't, I don't even remember the number, but we make a lot of decisions about food throughout the day. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you know, it's, should I have coffee? Should I have creamer with that? No, I shouldn't have the creamer because it has a lot of sugar or calories or whatever. And then you think, well, let, should I stop by and grab a donut on the way to work? No, I'm not going to do that because I'm trying to lose weight. So throughout the day, you're making all these decisions about food. And eventually, your willpower does wear down throughout the day. So you've made all these decisions about food in the morning and afternoon. By the time the evening comes around, your decision making is like worn off. It's tired. It's tired of thinking about food. And that's when you start to make bad decisions about food, poor food choices, and you grab pizza on the way home. So think about that too. Um, throughout the day, it does get more difficult to make good, healthy choices. Um, Let's see, the next thing I wanna remind you is if you're getting closer to your goal, I have notes down here in case you didn't know, that's why I'm looking down, otherwise I go off the deep end with rambling about other things. Um, anyway, so if you're getting really close to your goal weight, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to lose the weight. Not only because you've been dieting for a while, and I hope you're not doing a technical diet, I hope you're just making healthy lifestyle choices, but to, according to your body, you've been dieting for a while, you've been working out for a while, you've been eating healthy for, your, for a while, and your body's job is to create homeostasis, like I said before, and so our bodies are really, really adaptable to the workouts and the nutrition, and you can consistently eat the same things and you consistently do the same workouts day in and day out and month after month after month, your body's going to get used to it. It's going to adapt to it and it's time to make changes. So if you're struggling with a plateau or the first or last 10 pounds, it's time to make some changes and be super honest with yourself about what you are doing that's holding you back. And, you know, eventually progress ultimately slows down. If you're somebody who has a hundred pounds to lose, 60 pounds to lose, Initially, you're going to lose a lot of weight up front. You could lose 30 or 40 pounds just in the first month if you have a lot of weight to lose. And if you went from eating fast food and junk and several thousand calories a day to eating a healthy amount of calories and getting in some workouts, you're going to drop some weight fast. But 
eventually that does slow down. Um, so if you're a 200 pound woman and, and your healthy weight is 150 pounds, you're gonna lose weight a little faster. If you're 250 pounds and your healthy weight is 150 pounds, you're gonna lose weight a lot faster. If you're 160 pounds and your goal weight is 150, it's gonna be pretty hard to get there. It's gonna take a little longer, take more patience, take more tweaking. So just be really patient with, patient with the process. Um, and just realize that it's normal to hit plateaus because that's just what your body does. And you have to learn how to push through those plateaus. You have to learn how to honestly take stock of what you are eating, how you're working out, how you're sleeping. All these things are so important because they do affect your weight loss. Um, so now let's dive in a little bit more about nutrition. Um, and I'm not talking a whole lot about nutrition today because really, it all comes down to following meal plan and being consistent with it and not going back to your old habits. And, um, and I can't tell you exactly how many calories you need to eat in this video because it's very different for everybody. It depends on your starting point. It depends on your activity level. It depends on what you weigh right now and where you want to go. So there's, there's calculations you can do to figure that out. And that's what I do with my customers when I'm coaching them. I help them figure these things out and give them tools and resources to follow calculations and create meal plans and use my meal plans and monitor portions. Um, so that's more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. But keep in mind the biggest importance with nutrition is to eat clean and do it consistently. Um, sorry, I feel like I have something in my tooth up here. All right, so back to the tracking everything. Like I said, take... Um, Track in a journal or something, your, your nutrition, what you're drinking, everything you're putting into your mouth for two or three days. And in, in addition to that, I would want you to track your sleep and also track your water intake. Um, because like I said previously, sleep is super important. And like I said, be super honest. Don't just make adjustments now because now you're tracking it. Um, and if you want to track your food for three days, go ahead and send it to me. Post it in the group and I can take a quick look at it and tell you where you might be making some mistakes. I can give you a little feedback. So feel free to track your food for three days and, and post it in the group and I'll look at it. Um, you can send it to me privately, but honestly, I think that the whole group gets more out of it if you post it publicly because other people in the group might be making the same mistakes as you. So it's easier to share and educate everybody about this rather than just one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So I would prefer that you post questions and things like that in the group so that everyone benefits from it. Um, and also, like I said, check your, track your, your water intake. Water intake is a huge, huge, huge tool for weight loss because if you're feeling really hungry, a lot of times you're just dehydrated and you just need to drink some water and then that hunger will go away. Um, that's, you know, when you're feeling a little hungry and you shouldn't be feeling hungry because you recently ate or something like that, that's the first sign that you're, that you're dehydrated. Um, if you feel really, really thirsty, you're already dehydrated. You're past dehydration. You need to drink water. So that's really important too. And if you're not getting in enough water, that's gonna affect your weight loss, it's gonna affect how your body gets rid of, you know, detoxes and gets rid of things. Um, it's gonna affect your poop, you know, it affects a lot of different things. Water is so important, your body is mostly made up of water, your organs, your brain, all these, you know, everything in your body, your skin, everything is made up mostly of water. So you have to keep it hydrated and throughout the day, you lose that and so you always need to be getting more water. So I want you to track your water as well as the food in your sleep. Um, and if you don't know, the proper amount of water to shoot for at minimum is half your weight in ounces. So if you're a 150 pound person, you need to drink 75 ounces minimum a day. Um, it was hard for me at first. I, used, I was never a big water drinker and I was a big like soda drinker and drinking sweet drinks like Gatorade and things like that. Um, so what I did to get off the soda, I used to drink a ton of Pepsi. What I did is I got the little bottles of water flavoring. You can get it like Walmart or King Supers or whatever. And I put some drops into my water bottle and fill up the water. And I, I tell you, I had it pretty sweet there for a while. I put a lot of flavoring in there. But what I did was over time, I used less and less and less water flavoring until it was so diluted that I didn't need to use it anymore. And now I just drink water. So it takes some practice to get in enough water. A lot of people don't like water. You're just not in the habit of doing it. You prefer to drink your coffee and tea and sodas, but you really have to get off, off of that, those habits if you want to lose weight and be healthy and stay hydrated properly. Um, 
another thing that really helped me is I got a big water bottle for like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. It was a Nalgene. I think that's how you say it. Clear water bottle. And what I did was I like a third of the way down or half the way down, depending on how big your water bottle is, you can make a mark for, okay, here's where I need to drink to by 10 a.m. And then I need to drink to the next line or the rest of the bottle by noon. And then on the other side of the bottle, you refill it after you finish it at noon and you can say, okay, I need to be here by three o'clock, here by six o'clock. And now I've drank two whole water bottles because I got a really big one. Um, so I only needed to drink like two or three a day to hit my goal. So put times on your water bottles and have that be your goal. And it really worked for me because I'd be constantly looking at it while I was working and it would remind me that I needed to drink water and have it at a certain level by certain times of the day. That helped me a lot in, in changing that behavior as well as adding the water flavors. So I'm gonna take a drink actually because my throat is getting dry. Um, so now what you need to do after you've tracked your nutrition, tracked your sleep, tracked your water intake for three days. Um, now you can go back and review it and assess it with an honest, you know, be super honest with yourself. Don't feel like, oh, I failed at this. I made a mistake here. I ate too much here and get down on yourself. Look at this as a learning opportunity to see what you're really doing with these three things. Because like I said, you do this for long enough, you start to get back into those old habits. They start to sneak up on you. And so be really, really honest. That is so important to be really honest when you're doing this. So now go back and look and see. Maybe you're not eating enough calories, which is really common for women because we get that mindset that if we want to lose weight, we have to eat less. And that's not really the case. If you're not eating enough, your body's not going to lose weight either. Um, so look back and, and make sure you're eating enough calories. I was recently working with a lady um, who was frustrated with not losing weight for two weeks. And I said, okay, track your food and let me know what, what, you, what you're eating and what your calories add up to. And she wasn't even getting close to 1,200 calories. So that was a red flag right there. Okay, you need to eat more. That's the problem here. Or maybe you're going to find out that you're – eating too many calories because maybe you were monitoring your portions really well for a long time. And what happens when we're monitoring our portions and using portion control, um, this portions start to creep up and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we're eating the way that we used to. And typically Americans are eating way too much food. Our portions are way too big. If you go out to eat, you should eat half of whatever you ordered and put half in a to-go box and save it for tomorrow. Um, that's one of my tips too about eating out. But you might realize that you're eating too many calories or that those, you know, every time you walk by the reception desk at work, that those little grabs of little candy here and there or those nuts or little things you have at your desk that, you know, people that work in offices always keep snacks in their desk, which isn't really a good thing to keep around because what you'll do is you might get bored at work and then start eating when you really shouldn't be. And you'll find that um, you've got calories sneaking in throughout the day that end up adding up to a few hundred extra calories or even several hundred extra calories and you had no idea. Um, and then over the course of the week, you've, you've eaten you know, 1,500, 3,000 extra calories and you need to be in deficit of that many calories in order to lose one pound or two pounds a week. So make sure that you're tracking those calories and seeing if it's too much or too little. And then another thing that sneaks up on people is they start to drink away their calories. So they start having sweet teas, um, too much creamer in their coffee rather than like adding just some stevia and some unsweetened almond milk. Um, people start drinking soda, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that calories can sneak in through your drinks. And if you're a drinker, you like your booze. Um, I like my booze, but I, I, you know, I save it for certain occasions or when we go on vacation or something like that. And if I have any alcohol, it's maybe once a week and it's going to be some wine and I have a glass. I don't have a whole bottle, which, you know, that's really easy to do. Um, because, what can happen is if you're drinking beer and booze and things like that, those are counterproductive to losing weight. So if you're drinking right now and you're struggling with your weight loss, you need to cut out the booze for a while until you get your body back to burning fat again. Um, and another thing that people find when they track their food is that maybe they're still eating the amount of calories required for their heavier weight. So when people start to, you know, when you go on a weight loss journey, 
and you're 187 pounds, you're going to eat a certain number of calories a day. And it's going to be more than what you would eat at 150 pounds, which is totally normal. When you're a bigger person, your body requires more water, it requires more nutrients to sustain itself and lose weight. So somebody at 200 pounds should not be just starting out with 1200 calories a day, you're going to feel really hungry and restricted. Um, so if you started out at a higher calorie range because you did it right and you've lost 20 or 30 pounds, it's time to recalculate how many calories you're eating now and not eat the same as you used to because that could be causing that plateau or even some weight gain. So make sure that you're not having the same eating habits and eating the same that you used to eat when you were heavier. So some other tweaks in nutrition that you can make. Um, if you've done all of these things that I mentioned and you're on track, you've tracked your calories, you're not really getting off track anywhere, maybe you know once a week it's good to have a treat. It's important for your body to do that mentally and physically. It's good to have a treat once a week so that you don't feel deprived. Um, and like I said, never reward yourself with food. You're not a dog. Don't do that. Reward yourself with positive things that you know take you steps closer to your goals. Um, so other tweaks with nutrition that you can make if all these other things are coming up that they're, you know, they're good, you're on track with all of them. So think about your nighttime habits. Are you eating fruit at night? Are you having sweets at night? Are you eating carbs at night? Those three things can, can make it more difficult for you to lose weight and even cause weight gain depending on how much of those things you're eating and how late you're eating. Um, I personally don't follow the don't eat after six o'clock because I follow intermittent fasting. And so as long as I eat my required calories for the day within a specific window, it doesn't really matter how late I eat. Um, but if you're somebody who wakes up in the morning and starts off with breakfast at eight o'clock and you have snacks and you're eating several meals throughout the day, it would matter for you to be eating at eight or, eight or nine o'clock at night because you started eating much earlier. Um, and so think about those habits at night. Yes, fruit is super healthy for you. You need fruit. You need a variety of fruit and a variety of colors of fruit. But if you're on a plateau and you're stuck somewhere and you're having a bowl of fruit every night, you need to move that to lunchtime or before and stop eating it at night. Um, if you have a really carb-heavy dinner, Frequently, you need to you know cut back on the carbs at dinner time and eat those carbs earlier in the day, like after a workout or at lunch when they're going to give you energy. Um, obviously, if you're eating processed carbs, that's not going to give you energy. It's going to actually make you feel tired. Um, so that's another tip: is if you're eating carbs, cut out the processed carbs. Just get rid of them; they're so bad for you. And eat the you know eat the carbs that process in your body correctly. So real quickly, you have good carbs and you have bad carbs. The bad carbs, that would be like breads and pastas. Um, it would be like chips, cookies. Those are all bad carbs. And the reason is because you eat it and your body processes it super fast. So you get a little bit of an energy peak and then you crash. And then what happens is when your body processes it, it immediately sends it to your fat stores. That's inevitable, it's where it's gonna go. That's why you don't wanna eat processed carbs. But the problem is a lot of people are afraid to eat carbs in general, um, but the healthy carbs, your body needs those. Your, your brain needs them to function properly. Um, you need them for energy. Carbs are really important to have in your diet, but it's gotta be in the appropriate amounts. And it needs to be things like um, ground rice and potatoes and beans. Those are all really healthy carbs and there's a lot of others as well. And what happens with healthy carbs is you eat it and because there's fiber and other things attached to that carb, it's like oats, it's going to slowly process through your body. So it gives you energy for a longer time, it makes you feel fuller, um, and instead of it going to your fat stores, it gets used for your energy. Um, so that's the difference between good and bad carbs. So never be afraid of carbs, just make sure that you're eating the good carbs. Um, so like I said, if you're, if you're having a carb-heavy dinner every night, you need to switch it up cut back on the carbs in the evening evening, and focus on like a protein and veggies and then have your carbs earlier in the day, have your fruit earlier in the day as well. Um, if you're not eating enough protein, now let me first say that as a vegan, I, I don't need any animal products. I get in plenty of protein um, and the amount of protein you need to eat is much, much less than we are marketed to believe. 
And I support you in however you eat. If you follow a standard American diet, if you're eating paleo, um, if you eat meat, I never push being vegan on anybody. But just to use as an example, you really don't need as many protein grams as most people need you to believe. And the thing is, with women, especially if you're eating excess amounts of protein, it, immediately, it gets stored as fat. That's where it goes. Um, People who eat tons of protein are like bodybuilders and extreme athletes because their body needs that extra protein for recovery, for repair, and muscle growth. Um, so like you'll see people, you know, especially men, they do, they spend their whole early life weightlifting and getting strong and bulking up in muscle. And then, and they do that by eating a lot of protein, protein supplements, lots of eggs, lots of meats, lots of chicken. And then at some point, they, maybe they get injured and they're not able to work out. And then they get really heavy because it all turns to fat because they continue to eat the same way. They continue to eat excess amounts of protein. So especially if you're a woman, you don't need as much protein as people lead you to believe. That's a lot of marketing that does that. Um, but for some people that just don't like the foods that give you protein, I, I know some people like that, and they struggle getting in enough protein. So if you're eating clean everywhere else, everything else is perfect, you can't figure out what's going on with your nutrition to keep you from losing weight, it might be that you need some more protein. Um, the next thing you need to cut out if you're on a plateau, actually you should cut out regardless if you're on a plateau, you should just not eat them at all. Um, but if you are eating them, it could cause a plateau, it could cause a weight gain, it could cause bloat, and that's diet foods and low fat foods. But that's again, that's marketing. That's why marketing has done an amazing job at making us think that to lose weight, we have to have low fat yogurt, or we have to have fat free foods. Um, it's all over the place. It's all over our products. And it's because they marketed that way, because they know just Americans are desperate to lose weight and get healthy. So they create foods. Notice I say create foods because they're not whole foods. They create foods that make us think if we eat them, we'll lose weight. And the thing is, they are really good at creating flavors inside of labs to make foods taste really good and make them addictive. Um, and so when they create a low-fat or fat-free diet food, they're adding sugar. Somewhere in those ingredients is sugar. And sugar is, can be called sugar by many, many, many names. So it can be hidden in the ingredients, and unless you know all the, you know, this long list of sugar, you know, the different names of sugar, you're not going to catch it. So, you know, next time you're looking at diet foods and low-fat foods, look at the label and see how much sugar is in there. And they are seeing that, you know, Americans are catching on to the high sugar content of low-fat diet foods and things like that. So they're hiding it in other ways. You know, they say sugar-free, but really it has sugar alcohol. Um, so keep an eye out from that. And like I said, if you're eating diet foods, low fat foods, just stop eating them. They're really not good for you. And they cause it's counterproductive to your weight loss. Um, the next thing you can do, if all of these things that I've talked about are in line and perfect, change when and how often you eat. So typically everybody out there in, in the industry of fitness and nutrition is going to tell you to eat six small meals a day, right? That's what we're all told. That's what we all try to do. But honestly, it doesn't work for everybody. Uh, I'll take myself for an example. I tried to follow the eat, you know, five or six small meals a day. I did this for years and years and years and never, ever, ever felt satisfied because the meal, you know, if I'm eating 1400 calories throughout the day and I break that up um, into six meals, I'm only getting a couple hundred calories per meal. And how annoying is that? Because you eat it and you feel like, Jesus Christ, I'm still hungry. This is ridiculous. I feel deprived. This whole dieting thing sucks. And you say, fuck it. And you quit. Um, that's something that happens, I think, for a lot of us. Because that little tiny meal never satisfies us. For some people, it does. Eating five or six, four or six four to six small meals a day is perfect for some people. It keeps them satiated throughout the day. It keeps them from having cravings. Um, and it works really well. But for some of us, it just doesn't work. So I had to change and start intermittent fasting. So I changed when I would eat throughout the day. Now, intermittent fasting does not mean I only eat a sad little rabbit food salad and then I'm depressed the rest of the day because I ate my food. That's not what intermittent fasting is. Intermittent fasting is, for example, somebody 
let's say I need 1400 calories a day and this other person needs 1400 calories a day and they break it up over four to six meals throughout the day, but they still get their 1400 calories. I delay the, my first meal and still eat 1400 calories during a specific time window. So I still eat all my calories, I just eat them later and then I stop and I eat within a specific time window. And when I did that, this body turned into a fat burning machine and it worked really, really well. And like I said, it's not for everybody. Some people, who, some women who try intermittent fasting see that it affects their hormones. So you have to test it out and see if it's something that works well with your body. Everybody's body is different in how it processes and adapts to different things. Um, but if you guys are interested in learning more about intermittent fasting, let me know. And maybe we can do a free challenge or something within this group and talk about intermittent fasting and how to start it. Um, because there's a lot of mistakes that people make when approaching intermittent fasting. There's a lot of misconceptions about it. When I told my mom I was doing that, she was like, oh my God, don't start. you need to stop starving yourself. But she didn't know really what intermittent fasting means. And it's not starving yourself at all. By, by taking, having three meals a day with my 1,400 calories, I feel so much more satisfied. I don't obsess about food anymore. Food does not rule my life anymore. Um, and it worked really well for me. So think about that. If everything is perfect within your nutrition, you're eating enough calories, you're eating clean, um, think about when you're eating and, and how often you're eating throughout the day and maybe adjust that. Some people need a refeed day, so that's something else you can try. So if you've been dieting for a really long time, you've, you've been restricting a little bit of calories every day so that it ends up into enough throughout the week that you lose one or two pounds a week, like I said, your body adapts, and sometimes it needs a refeed day. So for example, a lot of people do refeed days on Saturday or Sunday, not both, it's one day, and in that day, you eat more calories. It doesn't mean that for breakfast you go to IHOP and for lunch you go to McDonald's and for dinner you get Pizza Hut because that's a lot of crap food and junk food and high fat food. Um, it just means that you add in two to 400 extra calories. You have to play with it. You know, maybe you need an extra 600 calories or maybe you just need an extra 200 calories. It's something you have to play with. And I know that could be frustrating, frustrating and when you tweak things and play with things within your nutrition. You have to give it time to see if it will work. You can't just do it for two days and expect changes. You know, you need to try it for a couple of weeks and if it doesn't work, tweak it a little bit more and try something different. And that's what you really have to do when, when you're on a plateau or you're struggling with those last 10 pounds. You really have to kind of play with your nutrition and try some different things. So maybe you need that refeed day. And like I said, it's not a bunch of shit food. It's just more calories of the good stuff. Um, I already mentioned don't drink diet soda, I think. I mentioned that. Um, a lot of people go from drinking lots of soda, regular soda, and they think, well, I'm going to start drinking diet soda because I need to lose weight. And it's another counterproductive food product when we're trying to lose weight. Diet soda is not good to be drinking. It's very addictive. Um, the sugars that they put in it, the ingredients they put in, in regular soda and diet soda make it very addictive, regardless if it's diet or not. Um, and the things that are put into diet soda do cause bloat and cause weight gain. It causes lots of other issues, so you should just not drink it at all. Yes, I still have Pepsi because it's my favorite soda, but it's very rare that I have it. Like, there's just certain things you got to have Pepsi with, right? You know, like a taco night. I feel like I need to have a Pepsi. Sometimes I will. Most of the time I don't. Um, if I make homemade pizza, come on, you got to have soda with pizza, right? And so I might share a can of soda with my husband and have it as a treat rather than, you know, you get a two liter of soda and you drink half of it. So think about that. Get, get away from all those sodas. I already mentioned maybe you're putting too much creamer in your coffee in the morning and you don't even realize it. I was one of those people that, you know, my coffee would be really, really light colored <laughs> because I would drink, I'd be like a fourth, fourth of it would be coffee, a third of it would be, you know, or fourth of it would be creamer, a third of it would be creamer and the rest coffee. And I realized at one point that the only reason I was drinking coffee, because it was decaf, the only reason I was drinking coffee was because I was a food addict and I like my sweets. Those are the foods I struggle the most with. And so I was drinking the, the, the coffee with the creamer because it had sugar in it and I just liked having it and it became a habit. So I just cut out coffee altogether and I don't need that. I drink tea with a little bit of stevia and I'm perfectly satisfied. So think about adjusting that. 
And then I already mentioned also another tweak with your nutrition that you can make is, is re, readjusting your portions because a lot of times we, we follow our portions really, really well for a long time and then they start to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, you're eating the big portions you used to eat when you were 50 pounds heavier and you know, that's why you're going to end up back to 50 pounds heavier. So make sure that your portions haven't creeped up. One thing that I helped for myself that really helped was I ate off of a salad plate instead of a dinner plate. I mean, dinner plates are ginormous. They're way too big for the amount of food that we should be eating. Your stomach should be about the size of your fist. Most of us, it's stretched out from all the overeating we do, but it can shrink back up. And that's that's the time you have to give yourself. If, you, if you're really bad and you're eating several thousand calories a day and you really struggle with overeating, um, when you switch to an appropriate amount of calories per day for your body size and for a you know, one to two pound weight loss a week, there's gonna be a lot of difference in calories there. And your stomach, <coughs> sorry, your stomach isn't gonna like that for a while. And it's gonna tell you you're hungry when you're really not. And you have to ignore it and drink water. Lots and lots of water will always help you with when you're trying to eat a normal amount of food when you're not used to eating that amount of calories. You're used to eating a lot more calories. Um, your stomach, you have to give it time to shrink back to the normal size so that it's okay with the amount of calories that you're giving it. So um, remember that as well. With bigger portions, you're stretching out your stomach. And you know, the cleaner you eat, the better your stomach's gonna feel. So that's, that's really the overall picture here when it comes to nutrition, is being really honest about what you're eating, not letting these little bits of snacky foods and little things you grab throughout the day adding up to extra calories, and really focus on eating clean. For a lot of people, the definition of eating clean is different for everybody. It just depends on the style or the type of nutrition you eat and what you believe in. Um, and so that's clean eating. And for me, the definition of clean eating is eating as many whole food plant-based, you know, having a whole foods plant-based diet. So for me, that means staying away from processed foods as much as I can. There are some processed foods I eat, uh, like almond milk and, and some other things. And what I try to do is make sure that the processed foods I do eat have five ingredients or less. And I make sure that those five ingredients or less are ingredients that I actually can pronounce and I know what the hell they are. Um, if you're eating something with a shit ton of ingredients, that's a really, really processed food and you should not eat it. Technically, processed foods are anything that have, that have been adjusted from their natural form. So if you want to be really technical about it, uh, a processed food could be a cook, cooked vegetable is a processed food because you, change, you altered its natural form. Um, but let's not be anal about it, right? So um, I just stick to processed foods with five ingredients or less to give you an idea. So really think about eating clean. That's the big picture here is eating clean, not follow, falling into your old habits, not eating extra calories that you that sneak in throughout the day, not eating too big of portions, making sure you're getting enough hydration. Like I said, if you're feeling hungry, drink a big, drink a big glass of water, give it 15 or 20 minutes. And if you're still hungry, you might actually be hungry and need some food. Um, think about your sleep and, and think about, like I said, just the hardest thing I think for us is to be really honest with ourselves about how we're eating. It's really easy to, when nobody's around, to have a couple you know, things of candy or a candy bar or a donut or make yourself a little treat at home or stop at the gas station and eat something on your way home because nobody sees it. But really, you should be worried about the fact that you're lying to yourself, right? You're letting yourself down. Your health is more important than that candy bar. And that's something that I had to learn because I really struggled with binge eating disorder and eating an entire box of donuts in my drive home. So I know, I know what the struggle is. I've been there. So I can understand that. And I know that it's a hard place to go and recover from. And like I said last night, I recommended the book uh, Brain Over Binge. That's the book that saved my life from the food addiction and binge eating disorder. It made a huge difference in my life. So if you struggle with those types of things, I suggest you go check out that book and read it and absorb it. And remember that when you do read a book like that, that is meant for self-improvement, to have an open mind to the ideas and be willing and ready to absorb and to change. Those are really important. If you go into a book like that with a closed mind and a lot of fears, it's going to make it harder for it to, to really be beneficial for you. 
so that's all I have about dialing in your, your nutrition. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I shared, because I did, did cover quite a bit of information, if you have any questions about that, throw it in the comments below. Like I said, if you share your questions publicly inside the group, then it benefits everybody when I answer them. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Tomorrow we are going to talk about um, fitness and the tweaks you can make with your fitness programs because maybe they're not working anymore for you. You've got 100% perfect nutrition. So maybe the next thing we need to worry about is fitness. So just really quickly, number one, first step you have to accomplish and work on or get started on at least is working on your mindset. Number two is nutrition. You can never outwork a bad diet. If, like they say, um, your abs are made in the kitchen, and that is totally true. No matter how much you work out, sorry, hummingbirds just ran into the window. Um, no matter how much you work out, it's going to, sh you know, your, your nutrition is going to show in your body. You can't lie about that. It shows. So the number two thing to focus on is your nutrition. And then the number three thing we're going to talk about is uh, fitness and then the last thing we're going to talk about is detoxes and how to do that healthy so that it's not going to cause problems later and make you just gain weight as soon as you're done so we're going to talk about that as well on another day all right so i hope you guys have a great weekend take time to watch these videos and um, answer questions and things like that your assignment for this is to really honestly assess your nutrition and where you're at with nutrition. So if you want to track your food for two or three days, do that and share it with the group. If that's what you're going to do, let me know in the comments below that you're going to track your food and you're going to share it with us so that I can look at it and give you some feedback. Or if you want to just really think about what you've been eating lately and immediately things might pop up into your head. Oh my God, I've been eating this or I didn't even realize how many little pieces of M&Ms I was having at work every day at, out of the jar. You might have some things that pop out at, to you immediately and those are things you need to change in order to get through that plateau. So let me know in the comments below if you're going to track your food for two or three days and share it with us or let me know in the comments below anything that immediately comes to you that is wrong with your nutrition that you need to tweak and you need to fix. All right, so you guys have a great day and I will post up the next video tomorrow.